Kid Creole and the Coconuts hit the top 100 in the U.S. with this duet alongside Barry Manilow, Hey Mambo, from 1990. With me is Yannick Svedberg, who was a coconut at that time. Yannick, one of the reasons I had been looking forward to having you on Revenge of the 80s with me is that you're doing something very important now. Talk about how you came about being an addiction coach. Okay, yeah, it is really important. Well, what happened is that I myself, for all those years of touring and then going back and owning art galleries and the whole world of drugs and rock and roll and, you know, it's the 80s and 90s. It was all free, at least for me it was. And uh, it just took its toll and I became very addicted to uh, painkillers and alcohol. And in uh, 2007, I think it was, I just crashed. I, I just had enough of it and went into rehab. And through a year and a half of rehabbing and also moving away from New York City, I changed my life. I mean, everything inside of me and everything outside of me changed completely. And I started from the beginning again, from scratch, literally. And... Um, I decided that I wanted to give back and I just didn't know how because I, I didn't want to become a therapist. I didn't want to become a medical doctor and that also would take so long time. And then someone told me about life coaching. And for me, I love the whole idea that a life coach will take you from a, a, a stuck moment in the now where you feel you're stuck or you're um you know, you, you're thinking the same thing over and over and over again and nothing is happening or you have a job that you're just doing the same thing or every single day you may might, might want to change. And a life coach is almost like a very smart best friend that coach you on and makes you see things in a different light and makes you also believe that you can do it and kind of takes you on the road. However, a life coach doesn't tell you what to do. You have to find it yourself. But is there with you all the time, really like a, almost like a sports coach, coach, you know, like a football coach. And so I love that idea. Now, <clears throat> I didn't want to become a life coach in per se because there's so many of it. And I understood that addiction coaching or recovery coaching is something there is not many of us. And that I thought was fantastic work with people that either don't want to go to rehab or they don't want to go to a 12-step program or they might have come out of a rehab and feeling completely lost and lonely. So they need someone like me. And uh, I also work a lot just opening up this door. I open up such an enormous door because it's I only not just work with people that have an addiction problem to, let's say, drugs and alcohol, but people that are addicted to the Internet or to sex or relationships or you know, codependence. There are so many different destructive behaviors. I've seen that too. I've uh, been a news guy all these years. We've covered stories on uh, food addictions, uh, television addictions, that sort of thing. Absolutely. There, there's so much of it. It really is. And, and you know, when you are addicted to, let's say, a TV or, or internet or sugar or something, you wouldn't think about going to rehab because they, you just think about rehab as alcohol and drugs. So for me, it's been, I have a lot of clients that will, just doesn't want to go to rehabs. They don't, they don't feel like they belong to that group of people. And, and that's okay. They can feel whatever they want, but they need something else then. And because I have been down that road, I have been an addict, an alcoholic, I can really relate. And I think that's really important. When people hear the word addiction, and we touched upon this just a few moments ago, they tend to think only drugs, alcohol, cigarettes. How would you help talk with somebody who has an addiction to something like food or the internet and help them even though they don't think they need help? That, that's a great question. Everybody that comes and seek help has usually gotten to a place in their life that they can't stand anymore. We say, we say it um, if, when you're getting sick and tired of being sick and tired. And that is usually when people come to me, they are so sick and tired of being sick and tired that they want help. Now, 
the addiction part, and that's why I don't always say that I'm an addic- addiction uh, coach. I say recovery coach sometimes because people are afraid of the name addiction. So it is tr- a tricky word. Destructive behavior might be better. Destructive is the proper term, Unique, because addiction doesn't just affect the one person. It affects everybody around them. Yes, you're absolutely right. Destructive behavior or addiction is impacting everybody around you. I say it's a family disease. You know, when a lot of addicts, including myself, thought that I'm not hurting anybody, I'm just hurting myself. But that was not true at all. So when I got sober and I, was, and I started talking to my family members and people around me that I thought I had fooled, they were like, no, we knew all the time, not maybe how much you did and what you did, but that was, something was wrong. And there was nothing they t- could do to help me. So it was re- it's a really big problem. It's a big problem for the family, but also a really big problem for America, period. You did say before that some people come out of rehab lonely and lost. Mm -hmm. How important is it to have a good support system of friends and loved ones, and of course an addiction coach like you, to get through what could be an agonizing recovery period? I think that is the key, Chris. I think you have the, the nail on the whatever that's called, the hammer on the nail, because that is the crux of the problem that we're facing. It's you live in a rehab, you live in a really safe bubble, which is incredibly important, but it is a bubble and you're really safe. And then you get back to your life again, where in your cell phone, you might have drug addicts telephone number, you might have a cabinet at home filled with liquor, you might have still your internet, you might have, if let's say you have a sex addiction, maybe you have the internet's still at home and nobody closed it out. You know, there's so many things you're coming back to with no cushion at all. And that family and friends, they can be supportive and understand it then, including 12-step meetings or a coach like my, my, myself. It's key. It's absolutely key. 99% of people that relapse after, uh, the relapses after they come back from, um, from a rehab. That's ridiculous. Now, Yannick, how much help did you receive when you were recovering? Uh, You know, I did something very smart. I was told something very smart. My therapist in Renaissance, where I was, told me, do not move back to New York. Stay in Florida, that's where I was, until you feel strong enough to be able to move back into your life again. I stayed there for a year and a half, and that was the key for me. Because when I did return back to New York... I was really sober. I was very happy being sober. And there was no chance that I wanted to go back on drinking or drugging again at all. And so that was for key for me. But who can move? You know what I mean? Not everybody can move to where they are. You know, that's just it's impossible. People have to go back to their normal lives again. I really don't know how they do it. I really don't. And it had to have been tough for you when you first came to the rock world. You were, as you said, only 16, 17 years old. So there was a lot of pressure to go along with everybody on this. And that was pretty much prime bait for falling into an addiction. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I was I was very, very young. And also back in the 80s and 90s, at least in the 80s when I, I started, like I said, the, everything was free and everything was there. You could just ask for it. I was trained in the ballet academy. So for two years, I didn't touch anything because I was so scared of it. But just like you said, you know, you, you start getting um, influenced by other people and people around you. I mean, everybody you hang out with is on tour. You know, <laughs> even if the superstars you hang out with are all on tour. So that whole life... It was, I don't know how it is anymore, but was really not very healthy for a (laughs) 17-year-old. So, Yannick, let's say somebody comes to you and says, hey, I'm addicted to the Internet. I'm addicted to painkillers. I'm addicted to cigarettes. How can you help me? What's the first thing you do? I'll ask them if they will be ready to go to rehab because first I would like to get them clean and sober. So if they are ready for that, then I have contacts, of course. 
if they're not ready to go away, there are other rehabs you can go for every day. You can still live live your life. And if they're not ready for that, if they really just want to see me, then I will go through steps with them to stop uh, doing whatever they're doing. It depends on what addiction you have. All addictions are very different. Like with alcohol, you have to just stop it. And I, I'll be there with you. But we, we, we can't like some people want to go from you know, drinking vodka to drink wine to drink beer and then not drink anything. That It doesn't work that way. You can't do it that way. You just really have to stop. And uh, so that's different from, let's say, food, because with food, you can't live without food. So that w- I will just do that very differently. Mm-hmm. But my first question for whomever comes to me and when I've seen them for about an hour and a half, two hours, is if they would be willing to go to a rehab and then I'll see them after they're done. That's my first question, because that's safe to, to get, you know, get off whatever they are on. How do you help somebody keep the strength to fight with their addiction every day after rehab? You know, I, I, I try to not say things like fight. I, I, I try to do everything very positive and not concentrate on staying sober, but living sober and having a sober life. You see, if you have been an addict, in the very end It's hell, hell on earth. You're living hell. So getting sober, it's really, really scary. But in one way, it's almost like a mountain off off your shoulder. So the only thing what happens is that there are triggers why you did it in the first place. So it could be depression or whatever it is. We have to work on the triggers. So when they come, you think about something else. You can do something else. But what I'm trying to do with everything I do is to see things positive and not negative. To be clean and sober is a phenomenal, fantastic thing in your life. And from now on, it will be the most amazing life you ever had. And so when I talk to a person that comes like from rehab or is getting clean and sober by themselves, we do everything as much as possible in a very positive light. And that's, for me, it's a huge key. Yannick Svedberg's my guest on Revenge of the 80s Radio. She was one of the coconuts. She was in the band between 1985 and 1995, and now she's an addiction coach. Yannick, if somebody listening has a family member or a friend or even themselves wanted to talk to you about recovery or help with that, how can they get a hold of you? Well, they can go on to my website, and that's www.addictioncoach.com. Dot net or my name shaniksvedberg.com and through there is all my information that's addictioncoach.net and yannicksvedberg.com that's correct now you offer your services internationally as well yannick yes i work all over the world because most of my clients are either by phone skype or in person so it doesn't matter where you live i can help you That's one of the great things about the internet. You don't have to be there right next to them to talk face-to-face. That's what Skype is there for. And, of course, the phone is always there as well. Yes, it it works perfect. It really does. Yannick Svedberg, thank you for talking with me on Revenge of the 80s. Thank you so much. Thank you for calling me. Once again, if you'd like to contact Yannick for help with yours or a loved one's struggle against addiction, please contact Yannick anytime. Your website's Yannick, once again. Addiction coach.net or janiquesvedberg.com and subscribe to Yannick's YouTube page Addiction Coach J that's Addiction Coach J she has interviews, seminar footage and her clip from the Swedish Housewives of New York yes, it's actually quite cool (laughs) Yannick, let's play another Kid Creel and the Coconuts track that you were a part of Caroline was a dropout on Revenge of the 80s Radio